I mean, it was clear that the website, as it was until very recently, w was although kind of very good, and you know, people would often say, "Oh, the Tate website is a fantastic museum website." I thought I, I felt like I and others, and including my then director, were kind of dissatisfied with it because it was really following a kind of Web 1.0 paradigm. Uh, it was very kind of flat. It was really a, it was really a publishing platform, and, and sometimes when we talk about the kind of history of the Tate, the Tate website, we talk that, about it uh, as a, its kind of early life was. It was really just a kind of brochure. Um, so it's marketing materials. It was visiting the gallery pages and so on. And there's been the start of a move into a kind of channel approach where you know content would be specifically developed for the website. And in, and it's part of that. There's the kind of digitization of the collection, uh, but also development of, kind of e-learning resources and so on. Uh, and so really in, that, in those early stages what we were doing was kind of ex was putting a lot of time and energy into kind of web content without really addressing what was emerging as what has become now kind of web 2.0. And we, so we did a number of, we, you know, we started a number of projects that were kind of starting to look at how audiences might actually engage with, with the art gallery using digital media. And we very early on did a project with Flickr that invited members of the public to contribute to uh, really kind of the narrative of an exhibition. Uh, and the starting point for that was really that the marketing department were looking for a way that they could communicate an exhibition called um, How We Are, which was a history of British photography. And Tate is not well known for its, then wasn't well known for photography exhibitions. Um, and so they, you know, the marketing department were thinking, well, we'll do a competition and we'll ask photographers to submit things and uh, we'll have a kind of online gallery. And, and kind of we took that idea and we were like, well, why would we build something like that ourselves when, you know, this is the point where uh, Flickr was really becoming the kind of place where photographers gathered online. So we were like, well, let's use Flickr as the platform and, you know, and take the whole project there. And so we, you know, I just emailed Flickr to their public mailbox and said, you know, here we are, we're Tate, and here's, we're a museum in London, maybe you've heard of us, and maybe you haven't. Uh, and we didn't hear anything, and, and then out of the blue we got a message back saying that, you know, the email had gone through Yahoo and eventually found its way to the right people. And they were really enthusiastic, so we, and then we talked with the curators and we asked the members of the public to submit photographs to a, a Flickr uh, group. And then we, and then from using the Flickr API, we pulled those photographs into the museum, and we had uh, displays uh, on screens in the gallery. And we also had an online uh, kind of uh, display. Um, and then I, kind of, I think, kind of importantly, we also, I mean, it had a kind of competition element, but we didn't really think of it as a competition, which implies that there were kind of winners or losers, or that some photographs are better than others. But we asked the curator and a photographer who was in the exhibition to select. 40 of the photographs and then the last month of the exhibition they became a kind of display in the gallery. Um, so the, the public really were, were for the first time contributing to an, the narrative of an exhibition. Um, which is something that you see more and more but at the time it was kind of very unusual. I mean it's the first time Tate had ever done something like this. Uh, and you know this was really the starting point when we were looking at social media and thinking there are platforms other than our own website which we can use to engage with audiences. So we were kind of young and naive at that point and, and we, didn't, we weren't taking it as kind of seriously as we do now. Um, so there's, there's this kind of early life of the museum website as a brochure, there's this kind of middle period of it as a, as a sort of channel generating content for digital audiences and now we're, how we're looking at the website is really as a, as a platform it's a place where things happen and people are and that's really happens in kind of two ways one of which is that the the museum is a is a, is a platform for its audiences so it's a place where we can in, uh, we can invite audiences to engage with us uh, but it's also it's also a platform for us the, the opportunity is not just for the museum to invite lots of people to start contributing their voices and their opinions and so on, but it's also we need to kind of break, we need, we need to kind of break down this idea that the museum has a single voice and that's kind of typified by the brand and, and you know everything on the website is just you know it has no bylines, it doesn't say who it's by, there are no differences of opinion from within the organization itself and so 
what we're trying to do now is really develop a platform that's going to enable people in the museum to have lots of different voices uh, in a kind of unmediated way because his historically curators and, and others it's always been mediated through some other voice whether it's through a, through a press department and then to journalists or through an interpretation department and those things still happen but like I guess we want to find a way that's, that, that genuinely does show all the different voices within the, within the museum and invite all the different voices back and the different opinions and people will say good things about our museum but they'll also say bad things and I think that's okay. And I think a lot of, if you look at newspapers and how they've made that transition or how that, you know, some of them have really embraced that and started to see their websites not just as a place for publishing news but a place for having dialogue and, and debate and we're trying to make that similar move. If you look at the home page of the gallery and people within the organisation kind of obsess about the home page. Uh, but if you look at the statistics, about only about 7% of user journeys go through the home page. And that's like, uh, I mean, some people go straight to the home page and then they move down to the site and some people travel through the home page as part of their journey. But it's still only 7%, so most people don't see it. We felt very strongly that the, that the home page should lead with an artwork. And in a, not just should it lead with an artwork, but it should lead with audience comments. So if you look at the homepage, what you'll see is a very large artwork image at the top, and then lower down the page, there are kind of promotional spaces for uh, exhibitions and other things that generate re revenue, and then lower down the page to videos and apps and other things, are kind of latest things that we're developing. So the idea with the panel at the top of the homepage is that each week or uh, there'll be a, an individual artwork chosen and that, will, that, art, that artwork will be the subject, we'll write a blog post about it and that blog post is authored by, and at the moment it's all authored by um, someone within the web department who, uh, uh, and, what we, and the plan is that once we start to build a community of people who are sort of commenting on those blog posts and someone this that we'll pull to the home page a, a comment by a member of the public so that home page will, the only text on that home page will be, it'll be a picture of an artwork and there'll be a comment by a member of the public. So that's the kind of plan. And, and that, the plan is, that, I mean, that, the idea is that that will really try to position Tate's website as a place that's about art and a place that's about audience engagement, where you can come and say what you think and we will promote that to the front of the site. So, so, within the, so within the slideshow, we then added a, a search box so that people could stay within the slideshow and really just kind of explore art. The other thing we did was, on the artwork pages, we wanted to find a way of jumping from one artwork to another without having to go back to these lists. And so we added a feature which is kind of, you may also like, which is something which we basically stole from, from like Amazon or other kind of e-commerce sites. And there's a kind of, commercial imperative for these people to, you know, for you to discover new products. Um, so, although within the artwork, you know, there's a, the artwork has, at the bottom of the page you'll see there's lots of links to other things that are pictures of cats or pictures of castles or, or oil paintings or other things from the same decor by the same artist. But those will kind of flip you back to these kind of lists again. So we, we use the data and we kind of created a complicated uh, algorithm, which I don't know how it works, magic, someone programmed the magic, and it basically selects other things that are kind of similar to the work that you're looking at. And one of the things that we did about halfway through was make it so that they weren't too similar. So they would try and throw you some more unusual things. Uh, so that you can essentially move through the entire collection with it, without ever having to put in something into the search box. You could simply come to an artwork and lots of people land, of course, on the website on an artwork page and they could then move around the whole collection from there. Um, and in due course, one of the things we want to do is we just uh, received a large funding ap application that's been successful to digitize Tate's archive. So within that, there's kind of artist letters and sketchbooks and we want to put all of those things in the same user interface and relink them again. So. If you're looking at an artwork, you can then see the related, you know, the letter that where the artist talks about it and so on, which is kind of going to be difficult technologically, but <laughs> that's why we're here.